when we talk about strong and weak forces, we've got to think, you know, we've got to have the same thing we're comparing them to, otherwise it's meaningless. So let's say, let's think of the, of the proton, two protons for example. So there are, there are protons in, you know, that make up all of us, so making up the, the petals of these roses. Now the force of, of gravity on these protons is negligible. So in terms of um, gravity and Valentine's Day and this rose, the only influence of, of, of gravity is because the whole of the earth is pulling on these petals and that's what's pulling it down. So the whole mass of the earth is pulling it down. But in terms of the protons themselves, they, do, they don't care about it. The, the, the other interactions that the protons are involved in are much more significant. So gravity, in fact, is only really influential on very massive objects and on large distances. That's where we, we really begin to see it. So, for example, the moon going around the Earth and the Earth going around the sun and the distribution of galaxies and their relative motion to one another is all affected by gravity. But for the protons in, the, in, the, in, this, in these beautiful petals here, then that gravity is fairly negligible. The same actually goes for the electroweak interaction, and the, weak in, the weak force here. The, the, the petals aren't di disintegrating on us from radioactive decay. So, so the role of the weak interaction is, is, is not, so, not so important here. As we said, that's, that's really important for understanding how the sun burns. But electromagnetism, of course, now, now you're talking of a serious interesting interaction that's playing a big role. It plays a role in, in, in many ways. The electromagnetic f uh, interactions are really manifest here in, in the rose and um, we see it through uh, the fact that we can see the red of the petals which is the light that's been transmitted, you know, that, that's come in and has been absorbed and then transmitted back out again to us. We see it in the green of the leaves. So we're seeing the electromagnetic interaction. Uh, 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 a particular way we're seeing it that, that I don't think people generally think about it, is the fact that I'm able to hold it and it doesn't go straight through my hand. Similarly, I don't go straight through the chair. The things that are binding the chair together, that are binding the flower together, is actually electrostatic forces. It's that that stops us falling through the chair and stops the flower falling through the ceiling, uh, the floor here. So we've got the electromagnetic forces and then we've got the strong force and as, as I said in, in, in these petals they, there are all sorts of elements and one of them is carbon uh, for example and, and in, the, in the carbon nucleus there are all these protons and they're wanting naturally to pull apart because they've got the same charge. The electromagnetism there wants to pull them apart but it's the strong force on those protons. It's that that wins out over everything else when you talk about the protons and they bind them together through the exchange of what are called gluons. These, and a neat name for the glue binding the protons together. And that, that force is something like 10 to the power of 38 times bigger than the associated gravitational force, gravitational interaction. And the electromagnetic interaction is something like a hundred times less strong than the strong force. So you can st see that it's still way bigger than the gravitational effect on these individual protons, but it's not as strong as the strong force. And that's why these things don't simply blow up on you. All particles influence every other particle through gravity. That's, that's the unique thing about gravity, of course. Gravity doesn't care whether it's got a charge or not. Gravity works on all particles. On the other hand, electromagnetism does care if it's got a charge. If, it, if it's got no charge, even though electromagnetism has a, an infinite range, it won't act on a particle without charge. Back to my trusted coloured balls. Um, if, you take those, if you take two atoms, you bring them together, well, you start off from infinity, there's no, they're not interacting with each other. You, you bring them closer and closer and closer and closer together, and they interact. Why do they interact? Why do they start to attract each other? Why is there an attraction? Feynman said, um, Richard Feynman said that if you wanted to have one sentence that encapsulated all scientific knowledge, it would be, um, all matter is made of atoms, small particles that attract each other for, at a certain distance and then repel each other when they get cl very close together. So why is it they attract each other and why is it that they repel each other? Well, they attract each other due to the interaction of the electrons. Even before 
you form uh, a chemical bond. Even before you have a sharing or a transfer of charge, a covalent or an ionic bond, these two atoms sense each other. There's an attraction between them. That attraction arises from something called the van der Waals force. And the van der Waals force is because the electrons here are fluctuating about, the electrons here are fluctuating about. So instantaneously, on very, very short timescales, there's a little imbalance of charge here and there's a little imbalance of charge here. And those two imbalances of charge, in fact, once you've got an imbalance of charge here, it can induce an imbalance of charge here, those, those two imbalances lead to the, the, the atoms uh, uh, to attract each other and to form um, a, a bond. They, 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 they can um, come together, form a bond. And then it gets really interesting because if you, if you have them forming a bond, they get to their equilibrium separation, the point at which there is no force, or that the forces are balanced, there's no net force. There is a force, of course, holding them together, but there's no net force. Forces are balanced. And then if you try to push them beyond that equilibrium separation, beyond that bond length, they start to repel each other and they really repel each other much, much more strongly than they attract each other. And that is actually due to something called the Pauli exclusion principle, which basically means that you can't um, collapse electrons on top of each other. And it's the fundamental reason why I can't put my hand through this a desk. It's a fundamental reason why I don't fall through the floor, for example, or I can't walk through a wall, is that Pauli exclusion principle. But that's all due to the electromagnetic interactions, and the, 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 the carry of those electromagnetic interactions is actually a photon. It's, it's, it's effectively a, a, a particle of light, or a particle of the electromagnetic field, let's put it that way, or quantum of the electromagnetic field. But then if we go in, so, so this separation, or the, 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 the typical size of, of an atom, is a few um, tenths of a nanometer. We're going to go zoom in, keep zooming in um, beyond the electrons, into the heart, into the very core of the atom, we get to the nucleus. And then the question arises, well, there are protons in the nucleus. Those are positively charged. When you bring those together, um, why don't they, I've, I've just told you that they repel, why don't they repel so dramatically, um, particularly when, when it's operating on such short length scales? And the reason they don't is because a new force kicks in on those very short length scales, and that's called the strong force. And that's, that uh, strong force doesn't matter when it comes to chemical bonding, but it does matter when it comes to actually defining the structure of an atom and making sure that the atoms at the very core of this don't fly apart. And that, um, an interesting way of comparing those is so if we, we can think about forces of attraction, but we can also think about energy of attraction. And so when these, um, the, the unit we use, the unit physicists use for energy is joules. But when it comes to thinking about interactions between electrons and interactions between protons, joules is just a very, very large unit. So what we use is, is something called the electron volt. Well, imagine if you've got a battery, you've got blah, if, you, if you've got two plates and there's a, there's a um, difference of a volt between those, then and you put an electron that moves from one plate to another, then an electron volt is the amount of energy the electron gains moving from one plate of the battery, so let's put it the way to, to, that way, to the other. And so, in terms of the bond, that bond, um, in terms of the electromagnetic force holding these atoms together, that bond strength, that interaction energy, that energy of attraction, is of the order of a few electron volts. And that's why we like the unit so much. It's just a real nice sort of um, rule of thumb or nice um, uh, simple unit to carry around energies of attraction for, for, for atoms or inside um, molecules or off the order of a few electron volts. Inside the nucleus, the strong force that's keeping the protons together is of the order of mega electron volts, millions of times larger. 